Hi, this is Lexus Bill, host of Drive Time on Joy 99.7 FM. Listen, you don't have to worry if you miss Drive Time or personality profile. It's going to be live on our podcast page. Just log on to www.myjoyonline.com forward slash podcast. You can listen to Drive Time, personality profile, and any other of your favorite shows on Joy FM on that page. You don't have to miss a show at all. Joy 99.7 FM Radio for discerning listeners. Now, sometime in June this year, we brought you news that at least four local pharmaceutical manufacturers were ready to provide the Ghanaian market with COVID-19 vaccines. This was according to the Pharmaceutical Society of Ghana. The announcement came after government revealed that they were pursuing local options of production following setbacks encountered with foreign markets. The health minister, Kwekwa Jumaimenu, said his outfit was already in talks with these local companies to facilitate production. This morning, the National Vaccination Committee, led by Professor Kwamra Finpon Boateng, is holding a stakeholders workshop on moves by Ghana to begin the process of manufacturing its own vaccines in the future. Let's take you live to that event now. And then we come to what we call formulation, the final product. It has to meet a specific formula. And everything, all the ingredients have to be put together and the final product has to be consistent. If we take what is the antigen, which will induce the immune response, it's usually accompanied by an adjuvant, which will enable it to be introduced into the, the human being to the appropriate cellular or tissue target. It sometimes comes with preservatives and stabilizers to ensure that the antigen doesn't break down until it gets into the, the, the human system. Sometimes there are septants and there are residuals. And then finally, we need to dilute the vaccine to introduce it into the human body. So the formulation is a very critical step that the regulatory authorities ensure that is, is, is in place. Next slide. So finally, um, you then have to produce a vial. You have to ensure that the bulk that you started with is distributed into clean, sterile containers, and that this process of filling these valves does not destroy the, 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 the vaccine, which I told you is a, is, is a bio, you know, viable substance, okay? And you have to ensure that the caps are also put in a sterile manner. And if you've, you've, you've been um, in the hospital environment, you realize that you even have to ensure that, you know, uh, everything uh, in the immunization process is, 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 is um, very clean and sterile. I remember there were some discussions about when the uh, COVID vaccines were introduced into Ghana, whether the nurses had to wear gloves or not, because now everybody had an idea of how clean, you know, the process of immunization should be. So it, it's important that the final product is clean, it is sterile, and has been produced in a good manufacturing atmosphere. Next slide. So, as part of the distribution and the inspection, it, it's very important to ensure that everything is clearly monitored and the quality standards uh, are, are maintained to ensure that a safe, potent, pure, and sterile uh, uh, product is, is delivered uh, to, the, to the end user. Next slide. So what I've tried to describe to you in, in these uh, few slides is this complicated manufacturing process that starts with, you know, growing the, 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 the original substance, whether it's a bacteria or a virus. It goes through harvesting, purification, inactivation. We assemble it, we formulate it, then we put it into the valves, that is the filling. Sometimes it comes as dried powder, which is, uh, goes through a process called freeze drying. And then it is then packaged, okay, to be distributed and even that process, if you've heard about the Pfizer vaccine, may require minus 70 storage conditions, transportation. So just producing the vaccine and distributing is an entirely complicated process. Production can take between six months to three years, okay? And we, we, we know that um, depending on the, the type of, 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 of process or product, 70% of the whole system would be just the regulation, the quality control, and, and the checks. It, it, it's as complicated as producing ice cream. When you, when you go to the supermarket, you have a choice, vanilla, strawberry, uh, uh, chocolate, okay? 
And, and when you taste strawberry, you want to make sure it's strawberry. If you pick up an ice cream in the supermarket and it is not frozen, it's a product that does not even meet your own standard. So the person making the ice cream has to make sure that when it's in the freezer, it actually is frozen and it remains frozen until it is consumed. And it is, what, safe and does not give you diarrhea. Okay, so same thing, multiply that 100 times to a vaccine which is going into your arm and the regulators must ensure that the quality control process, even through to the administration of the, of the vaccine, is, is done. So I think you've understood the background to the task that uh, the president has given to the committee whose members uh, uh, Dr. Nsia Sari has, has, has gone through. And some of the partners who we are currently working with, very important stakeholders, the uh, uh, German uh, uh, Ministry for Economic Cooperation, has even pledged a sum of 5 million euros for GIZ to work with, with us, to work with the government committee to ensure that the president's dream of establishing vaccine manufacturing in Ghana will come to fruition. We are currently talking to, to different companies, uh, uh, Merck, Romilag, and GLAT, who are important manufacturers of different kinds of equipment. And we hope that engagement with different partners will enable us to move our, our process forward. Next slide. So now that you have this background, why are we here? We're here because we need to discuss with you our vision, which is to achieve self-sufficiency in vaccine production to meet not just our regional, our national needs, but also uh, needs of the, of the, of the sub-region. And we hope that this will enable us to set up a, a self-sustaining process which will be sustainable over the years. So we want to be able to produce our own vaccines. That is our vision for, 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 for Ghana's va vaccine manufacturing uh, roadmap. And we think that this is possible with the support of all stakeholders working together, moving forward, knowing that, yes, we'll be able to produce vaccines in Ghana. Next slide. What are the strategies that will enable us to achieve this vision? This vision starts with the ability to establish domestic vaccine manufacturing plants. We want to strengthen the research, discovery, and development by academia, by research institutions, by any groups that will enable us to, to make homegrown vaccines in Ghana. For these vaccines to be acceptable, our FDA must have the capacity to, to regulate the process, which is at least 70% quality control and monitoring. So Ghana's FDA must be strengthened to enable it release and license all the vaccines that we will make, meeting international standards. And to achieve this, we think that there must be a permanent national secretariat that will coordinate vaccine development and manufacture in Ghana. Because we have existing research institutions, I come from one of them, we have private sector initiatives, we have various regulatory processes, and we think that bringing all of them together, coordinating and linking them will enable us to push forward with the vision of vaccine manufacture in, in Ghana. Next slide. So if we take the things that will help us to do this, very important are the partnerships, okay? Financing, funding. We need funding from various sources. The clinical trials that we have talked about, okay? These have to be done to ensure that any vaccines that are developed, okay, are effective, that they are safe. We need to engage in tech transfer. We don't need to reinvent the wheel. For existing technology that are available, we want to be able to access them. And of course, intellectual property. And that was Professor Boleman Pofo. He is with the Noguchi Memorial Institute of Medical Research. He's also secretary of the National Vaccination Committee, and he was leading that particular discussion. It's all live on News Desk here with me, Daniel Daze. Let's take you back to that meeting of the National Vaccination Committee, where Secretary to the Committee, Professor William Ampofo, is addressing that gathering. The WHO Maturity Level 4, that will enable them to do uh, uh, much more work on vaccine regulation. And the local or the domestic R&D program should, should have been uh, a well, you know, grounded and have clinical trials ongoing at least five institutions. We think that um, we should have at least three financial proposals in place and at least three tech uh, uh, transfer partnerships also established. 
And alongside this will be the development of the human capital. And so we would have established a critical mass of experts to support vaccine R&D and also manufacture. If we go to the long term, beyond 10 years and more, we think that we would have the capacity, we should be making vaccines for our own expanded program of immunization. And this is music to the ears of the, of the Ghana Health Service. Because in 2027, Ghana is going to graduate from Gavi Alliance, which is currently working with UNICEF uh, to, to, to underwrite our, our vaccine needs. So that, that's as an important target you know, for, for, for the vaccine roadmap for Ghana. And our FDA should be fully capable of regulating all the domestic vaccine production uh, from R&D to the final finished products. We think that our domestic R&D program should then be churning out you know, vaccine candidates for the next outbreak of a novel pathogen and even for, 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 for pandemics or whatever in, in the sub-region that are you know, pertinent to us. We have Lassa fever, which is just a West African issue. You may have heard about uh, CSM meningitis belt that, you know, uh, West Africa. So we want to have the capacity to deal with our own problems and not depend on foreign entities to give us vaccines when they have finished immunizing themselves. We think that we should have a self-sustaining ecosystem for domestic uh, vaccine manufacturing. Self-sustaining because if we buy what we produce, if we eat what we grow, I think you've heard about, you know, those slogans. Now we want it to to apply to, to vaccines, and then we'll be in, in, in a better place. Next slide. So we have a budget. As uh, Dr. Nsiasari said, uh, uh, through the, 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 the tenacity of, of, of His Excellency, we've had 25 million that has been earmarked, you know, uh, for the next uh, 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 two years. Uh, we've looked at um, um, various cost estimates from various, you know, stakeholders that we've engaged with. Uh, we think that to establish the National Vaccine Institute for it to run, you know, effectively going forward, it will need about 20 million USD. The establishment of local vaccine manufacturing plants, the, the cost, this is not funding that will come from government. We hope that private sector, you know, SDG initiatives, you know, uh, Ghana Investment Promotion Center, various you know, uh, agencies who help us find, you know, at least $90 million that the private sector will need to, to set up, you know, uh, uh, vaccine uh, production. We think that uh, from the estimates we've got from, from R&D, uh, academia, at least about uh, uh, 65 million would be required to go into infrastructure, into equipment, and into reagents for the next 10 years to, to, to really establish, you know, uh, vaccine R&D in, in Ghana. And FDA's upgrade to become a self, you know, uh, regulatory agency for vaccines will cost us about five million. And various partnerships, you know, all the groundwork that will be done, tech transfer, intellectual property, we think that uh, about 20 million over the next 10 years we will go into this. So we have a total of about 200 million, but this will have to be, you know, uh, actually, you know, crystallized. This is an estimate that has come up from the situation analysis that we've done, and we hope that more of such, you know, engagements will help us to come up with, you know, what are the specific needs, you know, that, and then sources of, of, of funding that, 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 that will support this. There has been some talk, okay, at the sub-regional level of, of, a, of a regional fund that would, you know, drive, you know, uh, vaccine production and R&D in the sub-region. So when we look at it from Ghana, this is what we see, but of course, uh, uh, other, other factors could come into play uh, uh, to provide resources or, or, or to let us see what will be the cost going forward. So um, I think I'm coming to the end of the, of, the, of the presentation, but the most important thing that we should look at is the proposed establishment of the National Vaccine Institute. This is being taken forward the, at the presidency, at the cabinet level, and will also go to, to parliament. So as part of the uh, 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 consultation to ensure that we, are, we have a, the, the appropriate model Okay, we, we think that this uh, National Vaccine Institute will be housed in the office of the president. There will be a governing board from the various uh, ministries and, and agencies that will make it work, especially including the private sector. There will be a chief executive. There will be a secretariat, administrative, financial support. And then the four key areas we think that this institute will focus on is R&D, research and development. And, of course, the manufacturing process itself, you know, to... To, to provide the enabling environment to facilitate the manufacturing, working closely with the FDA and the other, you know, regulators. Um, human capital development, 
the people who will have the required skill set and, and, and know how uh, to do the R&D and also to, you know, to, to, to staff these uh, vac vaccine manufacturing plants. And funding, tech, the technology transfer partnerships. All these are very key, and we think that in these specific blocks, they will be, um, they will be able to harmonize uh, the existing you know, agencies and work together in a focused way to enable us produce vaccines in, in Ghana. Next slide. So some of the current developments that are significant milestones, working with the GIZ uh, to, to do a, a, a specific a study, analysis on how the application of fill finish technology will enable us to establish uh, uh, vaccine manufacturing, both for national and regional needs. Looking at the sustainability, the long-term uh, needs of such a, an enterprise, we, we, we think that we also have a market analysis, you know, or plan, looking at how, you know, the demand uh, structure, noting the graduation from, from, from Gavi in 2027, how we will understand, you know, the, 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 the market and the needs against the regional needs as well. I mean, one of the uh, private sector uh, uh, agents, uh, companies, DEC vaccines, has already gone ahead and secured a government guarantee uh, in terms of its uh, uh, stated aim to, to establish vaccine manufacturing. And this has enabled them to go ahead and pay a deposit for, for equipment that they need and pay their business plan to set up vaccine manufacturing in Ghana. And um, this uh, a government guarantee is very important for, for private sector you know, uh, investment in, in the area of uh, vaccine manufacturing. So we're very happy that uh, the president is taking this forward in, you know, under his own you know, uh, scrutiny uh, with, of course, with the support from the respective uh, ministries to ensure that uh, uh, the enabling environment is provided for, for vaccine manufacturing uh, to move forward. Um, because we want to continue to make this process interactive, uh, the contacts for the uh, Presidential Vaccine Manufacturing Committee are up there, the email addresses, and uh, we are located in the COVID uh, Task Force uh, Secretariat. We, we, uh, the National Coordinator for COVID-19, Dr. Samoa Ba, has gladly given us uh, some space. We, we, we share his uh, meeting space, and we meet frequently uh, and review proposals and try and take forward the objectives and strategies that we have outlined. And um, we look forward to hearing your comments, uh, having your questions, so that together we can work together to, to, to make this uh, vision of self-sufficiency in vaccine production a reality. Thank you very much. You're live on Joy News Desk. Let's go uh, to other stories here, and we'll be speaking to some of our colleagues during the bulletin. Uh, who are monitoring the situation in the northern parts of the country as the Bagri Dam is being spilled today. Let's take a few messages. When we come back, we'll deal with those stories. 